How pathetic can some people be? I'm skeptical about some of the things we spend our money on now. Our tax money, that stealth bomber, that thing. The invisible plane, two billion dollars for an invisible plane that you can see. Um, yeah, I wouldn't mind if they just showed you an empty field and like, hey everybody, it's the stealth bomber. You know? <laughs> now I'm getting my money's worth. Um, but they don't, they fly it over the Super Bowl, you know? They're like, look, it's the stealth bomber. I'm like, not invisible. Um, you know, turn it on. Yeah. We would think for $2 billion they could blink it one time for us. <laughs> and then, and my friend tells me, no, it's invisible to radar. So we can bomb people as long as they're not looking up. <laughs> right. Which is tricky. Uh, I guess we go in first and throw out a bunch of quarters and then... <laughs> KZOC. All right, so Air Force One is getting a uh, upgrade. Remember when Donald Trump was running for office, he widely criticized Air Force One for being antiquated um, and for being a waste of taxpayers' money because... I want to say Barack Obama got a new one, right? And it was the most expensive. Like It was a ridiculous number. So he used that as a rallying cry for his campaign and be like, look, the government wastes money. They're wasting money with this Air Force One. They spend lots of money on it. And it's... And my... And I think at one point in time, correct me if I'm wrong, because you are a... You are a a Trump uh, enthusiast. (laughs) <laughs> Is that what I had? I had to, I had to figure out a way Everybody to Everybody called a Trump enthusiast before. <laughs> You're a Trump enthusiast. He is entertaining. Um, didn't he say that he would, if he was elected into the office, he'd rather fly his own plane than Air Force One? Oh, yeah. That was definitely a statement that was made. Yeah. Trump Air, yeah. He'd rather fly that plane than, there, than Air Force One. But unfortunately, the government requires the president to have a layer of security that Air Force One ha- uh, provides. So he has to fly Air Force One. Well... Um, the refrigerators uh, needed to be upgraded in Air Force One. And the refrigerators are carrying a price tag, thanks to the Boeing Corporation, of $23.7 million. Jesus. How many refrigerators is that? <laughs> it's two. So $12 million a refrigerator, essentially. Are you telling me every out. plane that Boeing puts out is a, a, a two refrigerators? Because you know they have, on a big plane, they'll have them in the front and the back. You're going you're gonna to spend $23 million on? That's ridiculous. It's much, much different than that, okay? Now, uh, it's not a contractor issue. This is according, of, uh, this is according to the uh, vice president of analysis for the Teal Group consulting firm that is also working on it. You need a group of consultants to tell you how to put a refrigerator on a plane, right? <laughs> he says, no, 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 no. It's not a contractor issue. It's a requirements issue. This is not getting people rich, except for me, because I happen to be the vice president of analysis for the Teal Group, which I'm probably not needed for this job, but I will go ahead and comment on this. He says that the much larger refrigerators can reportedly feed passengers and crews for weeks if need be. If Air Force One needs to be like just flying around for in the air on gas for weeks without being able to, you could refuel. Air Force One, right? While it flies around in the sky? Well, I mean, I think... That, yeah, they have a just, refueling dock? Yeah, they have... A, you know, a lot of planes can do that. Yeah, but I mean... It's a plane that flies down and, you know... Yeah. I've, I, I've, I've never heard that, but I'm sure that could happen. I think, I think Air, the Air Force One allows for that, too. Um, so they could, they could uh, feed passengers and crews for weeks and store more than 3,000 meals in the refrigerators and freezers below the cabin, and that's the refrigerators and freezers that are being replaced these ones that he speaks of that will hold 3,000 meals. So it's not just a bunch of cans of ginger ale. No, I understand. This is water. a very uh, specially designed refrigerator, whatever. It's a massive climate control compartment on the plane. That's what these uh, Richard Abulafia from the Teal Group consultant. Well, I mean, firm I get said. the fact that the plane has to, you know, uh, in, in, a, in, a, in an emergency situation, if it has to stay in the air, if it has to go somewhere, that you can live off of this thing. I mean, it's, you know, not only Air Force One, it becomes the White House, it be, you know, the president's on board, it's the whole thing you can run the country from. So I get that you have to be able to have, be prepared for any situation. It's a lot of money, 
A lot of money, $23 million. Well, for the thing is, don't have, have, have somebody for Boeing come out and say, like the guy that's actually putting the refrigerator in, you know, like, like grab George and say, George, how come this refrigerator costs so much? And have him tell you. Not the uh, vice president of analysis from the Teal Group that is the consulting firm for this job. Because that tells me that there's a lot of friggin' middlemen in this job <laughs> that don't need, that are not necessary to completing the job. <laughs> Running that price tag up to $23.7 million. Yeah. President Trump has not commented on the uh, costs as uh, he is a previous critic of the cost overruns on Air Force One. I know you can't fire prior, your government. But prior I mean, to his reign. For God's sakes, you know, it just makes you shake your head to think that if they have to hire a consulting firm to put in two fridges in an airplane, can you imagine what else they're hiring consulting <laughs> firms? Exactly. Toilet paper selection at the White exactly. House. Exactly. At Congress, at the Capitol building. Like, where does it end? Well, and the thing that stinks about it is he's the vice president of analysis. He's not the vice president of refrigerators. He's, the, he's not, this isn't even his field. He's just rolled out there to make a comment. See, consultants, I'm telling you, that's the that's it. Listen, if you're young right now and you're in college, find a way to be, be a, a consultant. consultant. Oh my God, God it's so rewarding. Consult. Everybody do, needs a consultant. All you do is like go into a market uh, for whatever it is that you're consulting, uh, talk, uh, tear down uh, whatever it is your client is doing, but then tell them they're doing a good job in every other area, so they keep you gainfully employed, like this Teal Group, and then yeah. you probably are are making. Hundreds of thousands of dollars for pointing out the obvious. All you have to do is figure out what the purpose, the mission statement of the company is, and then go in there and, like Jeff said, pick one thing apart and, and give them some advice on how... Oh God, it's such a BS. That's business. funny. If there's any consultants out there right now, you know. Come on. Well, <laughs> you're driving to work right now. You're like, yeah, yeah, we're, we're full of hot. <laughs> it's funny because this guy... Get it while you can. Get is, it while you can. He, he, he literally goes, oh, well... He, so he goes to Air Force One, I'm sure. And he's like, well, the one thing you need to replace here is the, the, the refrigerators. <laughs> I, got a, I got a friend of Boeing. His name's George. <laughs> he'll go ahead and he'll put him in. Yeah. He could get it done for about $24 million. <laughs> that, That's what I would go with. Yeah, I'm, I'm Okay, sounds somebody. good. You know what you're talking about, dude. <laughs> Next year, it's going to be the toilets. That'll be $50 because there's five of those at $10 million apiece. Yeah, stupid. 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 Thank you, government. Thanks for re rewriting that tax code. Billy writes in. He's talking about uh, the uh, airplane that the president flies on. I didn't know this, but according to Billy, um, any plane that the president of the United States steps foot onto um, that he flies in becomes designated Air Force One. you got to be kidding me. You didn't the, know that. By the government. No, I did not know that. How why, did you why, not know why that? I, why would I know that? Dude, why? turn on Air PBS. Force turn on the History Channel. Okay, I, I actually wrote on. the guy back, and I'm like, "Haha, you found you saw that episode of History Channel too." Everybody knows that. Nobody knows that unless you're watching the PBS cha cha no. channel or any, you're watching any, the History any, Channel. Any plane, anything that the president gets in is 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 going to be Air Force One. I did not know that. Really? No. Why would I know that? Because it's called the news. That's not the news. That's it's a called pay episode of the History Channel that no, you speak of. No, it's called of. pay attention. Of course, that's everybody knows that. Not everybody knows that. Well, everybody but why, you. Apparently, why is the air? Why is the plane? You don't have to get upset that you didn't know something that most people know. Why is the plane that flies the president around that gets the twenty-four million dollar refrigerators? Why is that dubbed Air Force? If that's called Air Force One, because that is his normal plane. Okay, if that's called Air Force One, then that's Air Force One. If he's stepping on a United flight, I did not know that. Okay, that it, becomes it, Air Force him One. Traveling in first class was was then dubbed Air Force One, which I guess does not happen. The president doesn't have to do that. Yeah, the the pilot gets on and he says, this is, you know, United Flight, blah, 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 now known as Air Force One. So let's say... And that means the president is now on board. Hypothetically, then, let's just say he sticks to his word and he, he says, I hate the government waste on Air Force One and as a show of it, I'm going to fly my Trump plane around. I love the Trump plane. The Trump plane is the biggest, like... Flashiest expense that you could ever. What and I it? think it's an Airbus too. It's is not it? even an American oh, made it's airplane. Not? It's not. I, I thought it was like a seven thirty seven, but no, that's neither here nor there. I don't care what kind of plane you fly. Whatever you're comfortable with, go, go for it. But I'm not. I, I don't know. Maybe it is. Uh, but but if you flew the Trump plane around, <laughs> and he said he said, you know what? I'm not. I don't want to have to answer questions about twenty four million dollar refrigerators. I'm taking Trump. That's then Trump 
plane is then dubbed Air Force yes, One because yes, he's flying yes, on yes. it. Yes, anything the president walks that. on. I did not know that. Well, you do. You and know don't it treat now. me like a dummy because I did not know that because I think most Americans don't know that. David just texted in. I did not know that. Don't yeah, feel bad. Yeah, David. Don't feel bad, Jeff. Your boy, David. I, I, I don't. <laughs> listen, there's nothing that this guy is going to say to make me feel bad, David, when he says, what, you didn't see it on PBS or History Channel? I'm just saying it's common knowledge. I don't want knowledge. PBS or History I'm, Channel. I'm say, you know That's what? That's not too... Morons. I'm sure somebody could text in 5433693 and say that Listen, that's common knowledge. If you have about, I would say, anywhere between 25 and 30 hours of free time a week on your hands, then you're watching PBS or the History Channel, okay? So if I have that in my budget of free time over the next no. 20 years, no, then I might know that, but I don't foresee it, okay? Andrew says he, he always thought it was common knowledge, but he said, remember, there's two planes, and there is. There's, there's one that the uh, vice president flies on, and there's one the president flies on. So I would imagine when he says, you know, if they got to do uh, $24 million in refrigerator oh, yeah. uh, updates to one, they probably have to do it to the other. Because, because if, if one, you know, has an engine problem, right. the president's got to get off the ground. He's got to go to the other one. Yeah, and the consultant I'm there, is, I'm sure, is standing there going, after uh, the first one is done. And, and the two refrigerators get put in the in the, in Air Force One one. Uh, then uh, when Air, For Air Force One two is uh, sitting there on the tarmac too, he's like, "Did you guys put the refrigerators in that one too?" Oh <laughs> uh, no, we didn't. Even, we didn't even think to do that. So oh, yeah, that's going to be another twenty four million dollars. Wait, could this twenty four be for four refrigerators, or yes. did it just say for two? It would. The twenty four. It's for two refrigerators. Okay, so one's going in each one. Or is no. two, they need I, two I in one? I don't know. I don't know if it goes on one Still, plane. it doesn't matter. Two refrigerators is $24 it's million. Dollars. It's crazy. And that's what the we're way, spending our hard-earned money the on. The way the article was penned, it made it sound as if one plane was getting two refrigerators. You okay. needed two refrigerators for the one plane because think about it. It's 30. It's, or, I'm sorry. It's 3,000 meals that you got to have prepared, ready to go. 3,000. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, Dan wanted to say something about Air Force One. Go ahead, man. Hey, so... Common knowledge. Go to go to the movies. Hollywood. All the movies talk about it when the president changes. Even Independence Day. Hollywood. When that Jeff. guy goes into the. When they go in the jet, they talk about it all the time. Jeff doesn't they have time to go to movies. Signs. He's got to go buy yeah. IKEA furniture, put it together, yep. and then take it apart so he can move, and then put it back together again. He doesn't have time to go to the movies. Huh, like a gypsy, Thank I'm you. constantly moving. How many gypsies <laughs> do you know? How many gypsies do you know watch movies? <laughs> Uh, know it all, Craig wanted to weigh in too. Go ahead, man, about government spending. The the problem with this refrigerator situation, and it's a lot more than a refrigerator situation, is people realize that when they're doing a job for the government, that they can pretty much charge whatever they want. Mm -hmm. And they I, do. I've seen this. I, I no, no, absolutely. I've seen this myself in supplying lumber and different building products for governmental jobs. And as I was doing my job, I treated it like any other job until I was giving a, a, a PO from another company that had to back out of it. And where my delivery charge to the job site was a mere $150, which is our standard delivery fee for where it was, the PO that was given to me had a $1,000 delivery charge, and they were much closer than I was. And it's these, these little things like this that add up to this. Yeah, absolutely. They're like, oh, this is a government, this is a government job? Well, they got a okay. budget. We'll just figure out a way to bleed it as much as we possibly can. What's your delivery charge budget? Oh, you know, about a uh, th thousand bucks. Okay, uh, right. that's about what it is. That's what it'll cost you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it, Strangely and crazy, enough, that's ours. <laughs> you know, I, I, get the, I, I get the reason for the refrigerators. If something happens, if they have to land somewhere other than, you know, where they can get to supplies, if there's uh, an emergency. Yeah, they got to have something to preserve their their food so they can eat and work. We get all that. Yeah, yeah. The guy, first guy that says, so "Okay, we're doing extending. we're doing away with exorbitant uh, government contracts uh, to uh, contractors." Uh, that's the guy I vote for. Yeah, I mean, it would be nice to trim the fat a little, as they say. That's drain the swamp. Wait a second, that sounds familiar. <laughs> <laughs> Let me wait. I didn't know you needed a twenty-four million dollar refrigerator to drain the swamp. <laughs> uh, let me back up my comments a little bit here.
You want to talk about waste of government money? What about this whole ban on plastic straws? I saw a story that if it goes through and it goes through the way they've written it up, the people could actually not only be, you know, business could be fine, but you could actually sp- spend jail time if you're caught serving plastic straws yeah, send, send in San Luis sh- Obispo. That's insane. That's insane. I, I wish I was somebody that was big, that did a big amount of business downtown. And the one place that comes to mind, and they won't, they would conform because they enjoy the business that they're doing downtown. But I don't know. I think rent in their spot is pretty expensive. And that's Habit Burger. Habit Burger, there's consistently, pretty much for the most part, a line all the time. So they're always serving up hamburgers. They're always serving up hamburgers. But then also, Habit Burger, I'm sure, for all their locations... Probably they order straws for all their locations, and you want, so so when you buy in bulk like that, for all your locations, you're talking about all the Santa Barbara locations, all you know, every up and down. Right. I mean, hell, they got them in Stockton. I mean, there's lots of Habit, habit Burgers, okay. And the one location needs to have special needs. It costs you money, and maybe they relay the cost and the price of their burgers at that location to pay for your special needs straws. But I would like to see a company like Habit put their foot down in this instance and say, eh, you know what? We're not going to operate in San Luis Obispo anymore. Can't deal it. Can't deal with it. You, your ordinances are way too, way too lofty. Why can they happens, still operate and just not have any straws? What, what happens when you, when you run out of uh, a, a, a paper straws? Are you kidding me? Have you ever gone to a restaurant and ordered a drink and they don't give you a straw? I want a does straw. Your, does your head spin when, I want a straw. You know, when that happens? I want a straw. <laughs> I've tried drinking just off the glass, and no, it just doesn't work. I need a straw. I like the straw. It's nice to have the straw. Uh, yeah. You don't want to have to suck through that I've had a straw hole. my whole life. Now I can't have a straw? No, I'm just saying, but, you know, it, that would be one way that a, a restaurant down Town, if they wanted to fight back against this, just don't carry straws until people complain to the point where you you get your straws back. And I understand some of the arguments on it, especially with like those little cocktail stir straws, coffee stir straws, and like all the straws that end up getting you know clogged up. Is that the argument? I, I understand people and where they're coming from on it. I, I treat this like the History Channel's coverage of Air Force One. I really am, am kind of ignorant to the whole issue. And but is that really our number one focus? I mean, what's yes. what's what's the what's the number one focus in this area? What should it be to serve its citizens as a local government? Turn a blind eye to the homeless problem. How about problem, make Jeremy? how about that, make that, housing that, more affordable no, for people? No, no, turn a blind eye to everything that is actually a problem and focus on things that you can fix, like start changing out straws and taking paint off of rocks. Hi, go ahead. You're on the air, right? The watermelon <laughs> rock. Yeah. Good morning, guys. How are we doing? Uh, we're yeah. doing great, Brian. All right. I, hey, you guys got it. You got us. A- got to focus on these straws we don't want anybody to remind <laughs> be reminded that one in five people in california are living in poverty mm-hmm. yeah I mean, we exactly. got to focus on straws, straws. that's straws. kind of my point i mean it's like, there's got to the be day. a better way to spend government money than we're worrying about straws i mean for god's <laughs> sakes okay you got your plastic bag thing through congratulations all right can, can we now can we take a decade and maybe worry about some other issues that we have here that are affecting people that live here because straws are not affecting anyone that lives here there's no one that got screwed by a straw last week. I'm kind of upset. Well, you, if I get pulled into can, the straw meeting conversation, I'm kind of upset about the waste of my day, let alone the waste of government funds. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. I'm like, wait, i got to go to a meeting about replacing plastic straws for paper? Oh, <laughs> yeah, thanks, Brian. Appreciate it, as always. <laughs> Somebody here wanted to weigh in on the... Uh, on the on on the on the, uh, the fire truck. Go ahead, man. I locked my kid in the car one time downtown San Luis, and that the this just totally illustrates the waste of the uh, hook and ladder deal. I it was right next to that Chase Bank downtown, and I remember they used to have the bike cop thing was right there next to the old Copeland. Yeah, I remember that. You know. Yeah. And so instead of calling AAA, I just called. I was like, well, AAA is going to take you know, 30 minutes to get here or so. Um, I figured I'd just call 911. They'll send a little bike cop over here, and he can pop the door open, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, well, they uh, send the hook and ladder, and they come around the corner, and five guys sprint down the street, and it's, you know, it's me sitting there. All I need <laughs> is my... All I need is my door open, you know. I, the kid was my kid was like probably ten months or eleven months old. You know, we just went and got. I think we got like ice cream or something, and 
And I put my ice cream cone down, put him in the car seat, like, you know, locked the car. And mm-hmm. the one guy goes, uh, so your ice cream's melting. And I'm like, I don't care about the ice cream. I care about the kids. But, Thanks yeah, for caring, though. Just funny Is that your job? That, you know, well, when there's five yeah. guys, one of them could be on ice cream patrol, Jeff. The other four are working but, on the kid. Yeah, just sitting there watching the hook and ladder come around just to pop a door open. You oh, know, yeah. I'm like, oh, my gosh, give me a break. <laughs> well, I realize that's that funny. that's pretty funny. But, you know, you got first-class service. You're not going to get that in Santa Maria. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, you're going to get five guys coming to help you out. I think you're lucky stars that did not happen uh, in Nuvolo, the most my ridiculous friend? people are spending, <laughs> yeah. uh, the government is spending money on right now? Uh, we get some high-speed train action coming in. Uh, anything for bicyclists? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, I, love, I, love it. I love it when they, when they shut down complete roads. Roads that are perfectly fine and built for travel by automobiles. And they take those roads and they're like, you know what? We're going to take this perfectly good road. It provides a good thoroughfare through the city, uh, eases up on traffic a little bit. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to shut it down and we're going to open it only to bicycles. Uh, you know, they need to design communities now with bicycle like paths. Like, so it's actually illegal for a bicyclist to drive. On a to Here, ride their bike on a road that is operated by a motor vehicle. Here's the just problem. like the freeway. You know what I mean? If we saw a bicyclist on the freeway, boom, ticket, no problem. They need to have their own paths, and then they could stay off the roads. Right. And look at all the problems we would solve. Here's the problem. I would rather do that than ban straws. You can't build paths where there are homes. And I don't know if you've ever noticed this, but if you own a home in San Luis, and we, of course we're speaking about you, sky bridges. San, it's it's San, all sky San, bridges, San, okay, Jeff. That's sky fine. bridges. That's fine because. Because that's the only way you could do it is with sky bridges. And no, that's and, why I said they need to plan communities like m- moving forward. Yes, they really do. Because actually, this community that they built over here um, on the south end of the South Hills open space, they have bike paths that go through that community. Um, Which one are we talking it's about? It's uh, new houses that they've built. They're building like another phase of new houses that they've built. It's uh, behind the trailer park on Prado. Okay, now we got a street. I'm yeah. just waiting for a street. Okay. Yeah. So Prado eventually is going to come through to Broad. Right. And they're building homes. They'll probably have uh, neighborhoods all through there. They do have neighborhoods all through there now, and they're in, like, phase two of their neighborhood plan there. But they've got bicycle paths going through these new neighborhoods. That's what Jeremy is talking about. You do you can't do that in slow, because if you want to chunk a property in slow, you not only bought, you know you, you have the house that you built, but then you also built a shed in the back that you call a... Um, studio apartment and then um and then you need to rent that out in order to pay the property taxes and <laughs> make a little money for your own people are living in garages and sheds and they're get, landlords are getting away from this, is for this but we're our priority is plastic straws this is, this is property owners in slow say listen we're all for bikes but take the existing roads and turn them into bike lanes don't try to use our property to take turn, turn it into a bike lane because we've already got a shed on it that we're making thirteen hundred dollars a month on okay uh david and ag wants to weigh in on the plastic straw thing go ahead man i used to work at a wastewater treatment plant and one of our biggest problems was plastic tampon applicators that there you go if you really want to make change to the uh, oh. city councils of the of uh, the central coast uh, we got to no, change that. No longer, no longer what? Because they they get flushed. Well, yeah, they get flushed, and then there's thousands of them mm-hmm. just lining our 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 pits where we put the water. Right. The only good thing is once in a while there'd be a drug bust, and we'd find twenty dollar bills coming out of the uh, sewer screens. You pick them up? <laughs> oh yeah, I'd pick them up. And twenty dollar re- bills and reuse them. You, <laughs> you soak them in. You know, you had to wash them in chlorine. Uh huh. <laughs> you, and you recycle them. You would recycle them, meaning you would spend them. Meaning I could have ran across one of your uh, wastewater twenty dollars bills at some point in time. You, sure, you could have. All but right. they were washed in chlorine. Uh, Jeff. This is why. I, I, this is why I, I'm, I'm quickly, quickly transferring over to Jeremy's uh, yes, plastic no, only. No, no cash policy. <laughs> And I encourage everybody in the world Thank to, you, David. To, to get Venmo so I don't have to give you a $20 bill if I owe you money. Good morning. Jeff and Jeremy in the morning on 93.3 KZOZ.